fixes dates for a national referendum in December. And since this whole process was galvanized, the attitude of MNDCs has changed. I can tell you, some are eyeing 2021. They've become more accessible. They've become more accountable to the people. Tonight, the minority is questioning the approach. We have details. Also, President of the Magistrates and Judges Association admits that the ghosts of the Anas expose continues to haunt them, insisting its public screening should have been resisted. We have more from this year's annual general meeting as judges having to queue for visas and poor working condition tops the list of challenges facing them. And in business, the first tranche of the Cocoa Loan Syndication finally hits the Bank of Ghana's account today. We have details and the impact of this on the economy and business. And later, the hat wrenching and shocking tales of how two siblings were sexually abused in a school here in Accra. When she started the first year, some seniors hijacked her in the washroom and sexually abused her. About six or eight of them. She told me it's actually the children did it though, but it wasn't the children who started it. It was the principal of the school. The principal of the school. We have details plus at day five of the Joy Clean Ghana campaign. Do stay for details. Join us on WhatsApp with zero on zero two four four three four zero four three seven. I am MFR Paul. Hey, my name is Evans Mensa. And we settle for details here on Newsnight, brought to you by Puma Card from Puma Energy, cash free convenience. And tonight, government is upbeat about securing the two thirds majority votes in parliament later this month to pave way for the amendment of Article 243, Clause 1, that will take away uh, the powers of the president in the appointment of metropolitan, municipal, and district chief executives. The move is the first phase towards a national referendum to decide the proposed election of MMDCEs. Now, the minority in Parliament wants a reverse of the roadmap, but Deputy Local Government and Rural Development Minister Osei Bonsu Amwa told the public conversation on reforms, benefits, costs and participation of MMDCs organized by the Institute for Democratic Development, IDEC, that government approach is the best and confident of an overwhelming parliamentary approval. The experience we've had is that most people... We apologize uh, for that. We'll rectify that and bring that to you shortly. But if government is successful with the amendment in Parliament, the Electoral Commission will go ahead with a proposed uh, December 17 referendum to enable Ghanaians decide the way forward. Uh, we'll try and listen to uh, Obi Amwa uh, once again as he enumerates the benefits of uh, the country, uh, which stands again when that goes through. By affording local people the opportunity to choose their own leaders. It should fully democratize the local government system. MMDCs will be more responsible and directly accountable to their people. I like this very much in the sense that since this agenda was put on the table and since this whole process was galvanized, the attitude of MMDCs has changed. I can tell you. Some are I in twenty 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 we apologize, sir, once again for that. Definitely a few will technical be rectified. challenges that yes. um, the technical team is trying to fix there. It will be rectified shortly. But as you may be aware, uh, the minority wants a referendum done first uh, before the amendment of the president's power to appoint. Uh, we'll soon hear from them. Uh, but the proposal for an election is welcomed by civil society groups who say development will be felt at the grassroots once it's done. Kosi Jonah has been speaking today also on that. Uh, we'll would also uh, hear uh, from them, as well as uh, the NCCE uh, commissioner, uh, his position is shared by the chairperson of the National Commission on uh, Civic Education, Josephine Nkrumah, as well as the General Secretary of the Christian Council of Ghana, Reverend Cyril Fayase. We'll try once again and listen to them. We need to orient them that politics at this level is very different from politics at the national level. You have not been into local government for so many years. This is how we can do it. The, it is the problems facing the communities in your district that matters to you. One district, one factory will not help. You are in only one district. So the water they drink, the feeder goes to the farms, the schools the children attend, the markets where our mummies sell their goods. Are they in good shape? 
And so we will have to orient our political parties. Please, now you are no longer contesting elections at the national level. You are contesting elections at the district level. So can you please look at the particular problems that face the various communities in your district? This is what you have to look at, not one district, one factory, and so on and so forth. Now, um, we, why do we need to uh, do all these things for the uh, political parties? We need to do these things because, as I have said, for 61 solid years, we have not allowed them to show what they can do for the various communities in our districts. We have kept them out completely. Now, we are saying, political parties, can you go into the districts and see how best you can solve the problems facing the peoples, the communities in these districts? You have a senior research fellow with IDEC, Dr. Kwesi Jonah. Now, you've been speaking to the local government minister on PM Express, for mm -hmm. instance, and she raised uh, the issue about going ahead with the amendment uh, of portions of the constitution to remove the appointing powers of the president in terms of the appointment of MMDCs yeah. before the referendum. The minority have concerns about that. Minority though. wants um, that to happen after the referendum in mm -hmm. December. Um, the minister wants their support. And, and as we were just about hearing, um, but for the technical hitch, the deputy minister had was today emphatic that when parliament resumes, they will return the amendment clauses to parliament for parliament to approve. They need two thirds to do that. So they will definitely need a minority to be on their side on this. And they want a minority on their side in trying to do this amendment. Let's uh, speak to Muntaka Mubarak. He's a minority chief whip. He joins us on the telephone line. Mr. Mubarak, thank you for time. Your news night. Yeah, thank you very much, and good evening to your listeners, and thanks for having me. So, does the government have your support when Parliament resumes to amend this particular part of the Constitution that uh, deals with the appointing powers of the President when it comes to the District Municipal and Metropolitan Assemblies, Chief Executive? Let me, let me start by saying that, I mean, our party at every level, from the presidential candidates to the Party National Executive Committee, the Pension Executive Committee, in all our deliberations, we've all come to conclusion that, yes, as a party, NDC, and all of us functionaries need to support this amendment. There's no doubt about our will to support this amendment to enable us to elect our MMDCs. But you see, when they came with the amendment, we had two concerns. One, we are preparing to go for a referendum sometime in December. And the referendum is what is going to get the mandate from the people that we represent, whether we want to go ahead. So one of the first questions that we're asking is, ah, why do you want to amend Article 2431 now? Why not let us go for the election and count? And so you know, we just want to have a teaser. That will help the whole Ghanaian population to understand that all of us are on it. And that is why we have even gone ahead to take the power of appointment from president so that it will encourage people to vote. That's okay, that's brilliant. Fine. So that hurdle is no longer an issue. But this is the problem. Evans, the president appoints and disappoints. So if you go to the constitution, Article 2431 is where he appoints with the support of two thirds of the assembly members. When you go to 2433, where he disappoints, now you come with an amendment with only 2431. So you want to amend his power to appoint, but you are not adding his power to, uh, this, uh, power to disappoint. And we say, no, 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 no. If you are sincere about what you really want to do, yes, you want to show the people that you are committed, the president is willing to let go. Then let's do the 243 comprehensively. When we say comprehensively, you are, because if you take Article 93 of the Constitution, where it talks about electing member of parliament. It's not just electing member of parliament. There are procedures. The person has to be 21 years of sound mind. The person should have been resident in that place if you, are, if you don't hear from the place for at least five years. All those things are qualifications. What will qualify you to be, to be able to stand in an area as a member of parliament? Mm. And then the same place, it talks about if you, want, if you decide to cross carpet, you lose your membership and they are, there's a by-election. Yeah. If the person dies, and how to remove a member of parliament mm -hmm. and all that. So if you want to do this, then you have to do it comprehensively. And even that, even, even, you know the interesting thing? 
Tell me. Article 248 of the Constitution. It's not entrenched. That is where it is talking about political party. You cannot stand on the ticket of a political party to be elected. Yeah. So say, ah, for sincerity, then show it. Because this one doesn't even require referendum. Mm -hmm. Just come with that one and amend the 243 because that one okay. is not entrenched. Why are you not interested in doing this? So it leaves a lot of suspicion on all of us. So, 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 so its fundamental point is going into the next session when parliament resumes, pa government yeah. said they're going to return the thing for parliament. They no, need no, to. It, they is, it, is, it is my hope that all the concerns that we raise will be addressed. 2433 and then 248 will all come together as a package. So you're so saying that it, un unless that happens, you cannot no, support it? Because we, will, we can't imagine uh, allowing them to amend the power, the, the, the power of the president to appoint. But okay. keeping the president is keeping the appointment to disappoint. Okay. When we go for the president, we come and they don't bring it. You remember, so we've not succeeded in any time since uh, we started this for Republic for a member to come with a private member's motion mm. to be able to amend anything, a bill, to, to do anything. So if they don't bring it, that means we cannot introduce it. Well, um, I'm grateful that you joined us with, with those thoughts. That is the Minority Chief Whip, Muntaka Mubarak. And what are the magistrates and judges saying tonight? Okay, so they've been taking stock of uh, their status as an association. And amongst others, on the top of the list, I should say, is the impact of an Anas Aremia or Anas Expose, which, according to them, has reduced their dignity and value, insisting its public screening should have been resisted. Now, President of the Association, Justice Senyo Jamafa, however, admits that the situation was not handled professionally, with the association shooting itself in the foot. Now, um, speaking today, he also highlighted the appalling conditions under which members have to work in. First, he called for the amendment of the law so that gratuities would be paid at age 60 years instead of 70. Listen. We are told the delay in getting our retirement benefit now is a bit shortened and much improved. We thank the service and management for establishing a desk at the head office for retirees. However, Mr. Chairman, why should I go to 70 years before I'm paid my gratuity? Of what use would that money be to me at that age? We have examples of some of our retired colleagues who passed on just after receiving their payments. We are thinking the law be amended so that at 60 years, a percentage of your gratuity be paid to you. At 65, another percentage. So you can use the money to prepare yourself for retirement. These dissociating things is more proactive and more beneficial to us instead of the lump sum payment on final retirement at 70 or 65, respectively, vehicles on retirement. We pray with management to make it more flexible and cheaper for a retiring jet to go home with his official vehicle. It is frustrating to pack your official vehicle and walk home on retirement. Security on retirement. We also suggest retired judges must still have police protection for at least 12 months before they are withdrawn. It is not safe nor fair to withdraw our escorts and literally push us into the public, mixing with the same people we convicted and sentenced to prison. I need not say the obvious. Now, Evans, I know as a worker, you don't have concerns about your salaries, but the judges, <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do. And they've been raising yeah, some concerns about it. We can listen I to them. I resist it. <laughs> the association is at a loss as to the meaning of, the, of this constitutional provision, Article 127, Clause 5 and 6, the financial independence of the judiciary. The association also wants to suggest to management to present two sets of budgets to government, one for the judiciary, that's the bench, and the other for the judicial service. We think combining both makes the figures look too huge for the, author for the authorities. And its effect is that it is reduced or cut down and it's affecting us. We do not want to look selfish, but sometimes that's the reality of life. Mr. Chairman, her leadership, our salaries are not the best. I'm happy a committee on emoluments has been set up and working on it, so I will not talk about that. So that's um, the concern of uh, Justice uh, Senyo Jamafa, uh, who is the president of the association, though. Evans, uh, they've also been talking about the cathedral and the relocation oh, of the yes, judges in yes. there as well. I mean, for the first time, you know, the judges didn't speak on the matter when the issue first erupted. Mm -hmm. We now know they are opposed to it. In fact, he describes it as a sad development. Uh, and, and I want to quote the, the president of the uh, Magistrates and Judges Association. He says, it is sad to announce that the association has lost its lands both at Ridge 
and the Alliance Francaise uh, to the National Cathedral project. And he says that we are yet to be giving a new piece of land in replacement. Okay. Um, we, but he, he talks about some things that they have been told are, are happening. Mm -hmm. Includes says they are aware of the demolition of judges bungalows at Ridge to make way for the cathedral project. And so that's the direct mention of that. They're aware of that. Uh, however, there's something that pleases him in the midst of the sadness mm -hmm. is that the that the service has initiated a 21 unit four bedroom bungalow okay. project at Cantermans near the uh, Ghana International School uh, for them. Uh, as at the last visit to the site that this was in September, they were almost at the roofing level mm -hmm. and uh, the, he's been assured the project will be handed over to the service by middle of 2020. So that's the thing that uh, pleases him in the midst of the sadness that he exactly. expressed over uh, the taking of their lands for the cathedral project. So there's something they're happy about. But there's something also that they're unhappy about is having to queue uh, to take visas and also asking for the restoration of the diplomatic passports for high court judges. The association is not happy the way judges are treated when we apply for visas to travel. I have the harrowing and sad story of one of our very senior and respected Supreme Court judges sitting with us right now, who was forced to join the public queue outside in the rain, waiting for his turn to enter the U.S. Embassy for his visa interview. Sad to say, I personally went through the same ordeal while our protocol staff stood there helplessly. It wasn't their fault. They are not allowed to help us. The association has taken the issue up and written to the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs. We are not saying judges should not be interviewed nor processed, but we are against joining the queue for obvious reasons. We must be treated with some dignity on our appointed days for interview. We should walk straight without having to join the queue. We should walk in straight without having to join the queue. That's what we want. We pray management assist us in sorting this very embarrassing and disrespectful situation out. I do not think our colleagues elsewhere will join queues for visas. Mr. Chairman, I had information from the protocol department that diplomatic status given to our colleague high court judges has been withdrawn without reason. We want management to do everything that is necessary to have it restored. Secondly, spouses of judges with diplomatic passports be given same status or at worst service passports. A judge travels with, his, with the spouse. He or she is offered the diplomatic courtesies at the airport while the spouse joins the long queue with the public. That's the, the president of the Association of Magistrates and Judge, uh, Judges, uh, Justice Senor Jamafa. Let's get some answers uh, from the Foreign Affairs Ministry. And we've been joined on the phone by the Deputy uh, Foreign Affairs Minister, Mohammed Habib Tijani. We're grateful for your time here on Newsnight, sir. So, first of all, how come the diplomatic status of um, High Court judges were withdrawn? We know that the Supreme Court and the Appeal Court judges have theirs intact. What's the reason? Thank you for giving me this opportunity to address these issues. Um, I just want to thank you for uh, bringing this to light. But I want to tell you that passports, diplomatic passports, and service passports are functional documents. And I'm surprised to hear that these things are withdrawn for judges because um, as far as we are concerned, I'm aware that judges of superior courts appeals court and high courts are given diplomatic passports and service passports when they apply to the ministry. Other judges, judges of other courts, as and when they apply for service passports, especially when they have international assignments, we give them. I am not aware that there is any single judge of appeal court or Supreme Court who is denied service or diplomatic passport. Okay, passport. so what, what they are saying is that, like I said, the Supreme Court and Appeals Court judges, they have theirs intact. But what they are appealing to your ministry to do is to restore those of the high court. And they are asking that at the magistrate's level, I, you give them service passports as well because it says it was withdrawn without announcement. No, we. You see, what happens is that when they apply and they have international assignments, we give them. But to give a uh, 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 service passports to everybody. Everybody. People take it and put it down. No, that is not the issue. But when people apply, we I'm telling you that when people apply, we give them. That is when, as and when 
they have international assignments to go. We give them, and we don't take it after that assignment. They still use the service passports. Mm. So does so it come surprised. as a surprise to you then that um, the, the judges yes. are mentioning it today at their at the annual general meeting? Causes of concern yes. to them that the, the high court judges don't you, have it. I am telling you, we give an unsupervised. I have sent it. I've sent it before, and mm. we have given uh, high court judges service passports who apply and they have international assignments to perform. Okay. They state it, and we give them. Well, that will be cross-checked with the association, though. But there's another issue of concern to them, having to queue in the rain and scorching sun at the embassies. Has this been brought to your attention? They talk about it being this, embarrassing this and disrespectful. Been, this has not been brought to our attention. What happens is that if they are undertaking official trips, they write to the protocol section of our... They write to us, and we refer to the protocol section of our ministry. And they assist in getting them their visas, but their private trips, they will have to do it on their own. But this hasn't come to the attention of the minister, and I'm quite sure if this is brought to our attention, like they have said, we will look at it and see how these can be addressed. So this is an issue that your ministry will be looking into? That, that is very true. We are grateful uh, for your time. That's, um, Thank the, you so much. That's the Deputy Info, um, Foreign Affairs Minister, Habib Tijani, there responding to the concerns raised by uh, the judges and magistrates today at the annual general meeting. Later on, uh, the heart-wrenching and shocking tales of how uh, two siblings were sexually abused in a school here in Accra. When she started the first year, some seniors hijacked her in the washroom and sexually abused her about six or eight of them she told me it's actually the children did it though but it wasn't the children who started it it was the principal of the school the principal of the school you want to stay with us for that and more after business hello george hi evans and they're coming up in business the first round of the coco loan syndication finally hits the bank of ghana's accounts today we'll give you details and impact of this on the city and the economy and finance minister can offer to assure of clearance of areas or contractors to help improve liquidity and drive down the cost of credit on the market the business news on Newsnight is brought to you by mtn welcome to the new world of business kingdom books and stationery your number one stop shop for all your office essentials and first national bank we are the bank that understands your business first national bank how can we help you Let's now settle for the details. And the first tranche of the Coco Loan Syndication has finally hit the Bank of Ghana's account today. We have details of this amount in this business text report. We understand that $600 million came in today. $500 million is expected to come in November, and the remaining $200 million should hit the Bank of Ghana's account in December. This means that by the end of this year, the country would have realized the amount it signed with 24 banks in Paris, France in September by Coco Board. So what will this mean for the economy? According to the Bank of Ghana, this would increase its reserves to about $9.4 billion this month and possibly hit $10 billion before December this year. Some analysts have told Joy Business that the development could go a long way to help fast-track the city's recovery as well as its stability. This is because it could convince investors that the Bank of Ghana is in a strong position to step in and support the local currency. They have also told Joy Business it could ward off activities of speculators who the regulator believes had contributed in the past to the city's volatility. Utility. The city is now trading at around 5 CDs 43 pesos. That was a business tax report, and in September, Coco Board signed an agreement with 24 banks to raise some $1.3 billion. Now, Finance Minister Ken Ofriata has given the firm assurance that they are working to clear areas old contractors. Some of these service providers render services to government have complained about delays in the payment. According to some banks, the development is actually threatening their existence. But speaking to Joy Business after engaging these banks for their input for the 2020 budget, which should be presented in November this year, Ofriata says they have made some significant progress in clearing these debts. 
What you can see from here is the bank's interest in forming a committee to come up next week with issues on liquidity, credit, um, contractors, and also even lending rates, um, how the de-risking could happen um, to ensure that we have a robust. The thing that I would ask is that what is government also doing about the, their complaint about some liquidity squeeze? You know, so what is our challenge? They have a stock of NPLs which they claim is sticky and therefore does not allow um, lending rates to come down as quickly as possible. But when you look at the macroeconomics, especially of this historic 7.8% inflation lowest in the in our history, you are going to begin um, um, to see a gradual trending down. Our expectation is that with the input that they are coming, we'll get a clear line of path as to how to help. The Finance Minister Ken Ofoyata, let's turn our attention to the stock market and Fund Milk actually lost 24 pesos to close at 4 Ghana cities, 85 pesos. And that's all for Business on Newsnight. Thank you very much, George. We are feeling a bit. Uh, we'll go for live commentary uh, with the sports team. But first, it was a story that broke the heart of many this morning. The heart-wrenching and shocking account of a mother on how her two children, a 10-year-old daughter and a 7-year-old son, were sexually abused after she had dropped them in what is best described as an upper-class international school. Amma, not her real name, has now resorted to homeschooling because the children became antisocial and are scared to be in the presence of other adults apart from their parents. Listen to portions of Amma's narration on the Super Morning Show. How old She's, was she? At that time, she was six years. When all of this started? Yes. Six years old? Six years. And when she went to the school, her teacher said that the second When she school, went to the... That's the same school. She went to the second year. Okay. And her teacher was complaining that she wasn't focusing in class. Mm. After I moved, I took her to another school. Mm-hmm. She, the teacher said she wasn't... They didn't come and take her in class. The slightest thing, she's going to the washroom. And I realized... <laughs> she did, couldn't cope on her own in that school. So I got a teacher to teach them at home. And I was observing her. And I was... Doing and so after she became a little lighter mm. we've been on and off on and off things that went on she's been saying of things sometimes she's been injected to sleep sometimes this and that i asked you say the principal has been putting some ball in both the vagina and the anus when they are coming home and then the mo- next morning they'll take it out she and put keeps it in her yes I don't know if that one stimulates them to be sexually active. Mm-hmm. She told me it's actually the children did it though, but it wasn't the children who started it. It was the principal of the school. The principal of the school. When she started the first year, some seniors hijacked her in the washroom and sexually abused her. About six or eight of them have forgotten the number. Mm-hmm. Um, we reported to the school. We wrote a letter to the school and then I spoke to the PTA chairman too and he advised me to go to Doksu. I went to Doksu and at first I went to see my doctor, but Doksu didn't take a doctor's report from private hospital. Okay. So we went to Lekman. So the doctor examined her and then the doctor said with kids like this, usually they have some part in the brain that they lock sexual abuse because of the threat that is being given them. Okay. So the actual facts usually will come after some time. They will, when they tell you one thing, they will monitor your mood and how you go about it before they release something else. Okay. So he gave the report and we sent it back to Doksu. We were reassured that when we go to Doksu, she'll be handled as an individual and everything else. We went to Doksu, they took their statement of which I wasn't so pleased because it was in the reception and about three people sitting there and then one person was interviewing her. Okay, they interviewed her and they, they wrote her statement. Now, uh, this story got many talking, a lot of them angry and disappointed. Evans is quiet because he's unable uh, to... Uh, to talk about this issue. Now, especially at the time that the discussion on uh, comprehensive sexuality education starts to speak, a lot of people who called into the Super Morning Show today uh, were so angry about it. We can hear some of them. I am so broken. We speak right now. That school is operating. Students are there. Who knows what is happening right now there? I think we should name and shame such schools. 
even though his brood, you are going to do some background checks. If you delay the school concern, you don't know what they are going to tell the children who are involved so that when they are being interviewed, they will be scared the more. So I will advise that you fast track everything. You should let those children, beautiful children of hers, know that they did nothing wrong. It is not their fault. The people, perpetrators, don't have to go scot free because they will do it to other people's children. Don't tell you, Mama Nyami, uh, Bekor, this. no, children don't forget. They grow up and it's there. It affects them if they don't get the help in time. And there's all this talk about teaching five-year-olds about sexuality, but it's the police that need uh, this education. Police are advising people to let this go. Why would you go and report? We should name and shame. The authorities should take action. They should get out and do what is needful. This issue of sexuality, whatever, is not needed. I'm advocating that right from today, some of us are going to organize ourselves, step to Joy FM door step, and make sure that you lead mm-hmm. us to that particular school. That school will need to be shut down with immediate effect. Because if we keep on slagging, other people will be doing it. God has given us knowledge to apply. God has given us wisdom to apply. We should not say that if they, 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 they trample on our freedom, we should keep quiet. That is not religion. That is not Christian. Well, um, it's, it's a pretty heartbreaking story there. You want to share your thoughts with us? We'll share the rest of the world shortly. Send me a WhatsApp, 244 Um Some of your views on the stories you've done so far. Uh, <laughs> this one has no name, but says, Good evening. Tell the judges to wear their wig when going to when going for visa. Uh, that's his thoughts on the subject. Uh, this one from uh, NS from Kukum says, Hey, even judges with their salary and perks claim they end well paid. This is enough evidence to point to how we in normal public service are suffering. Things are indeed extremely difficult. Uh, Joshua Fuga on the Spinters Rule says, A PR of GES sounds... Uh, sounds for for political and sounds too too political, and seems the government is entrenched on subtly introducing the comprehensive sexuality education into a curriculum. God save us from these UNICEF in position. I miss former President Evans Tamils. Uh, that's what Joshua says there. And Samo Mensah in Kumasi says, Joy FM, most of us will continue to remain grateful to you for your avowed commitment to fight all manner of rots in the system. The PR of the Education Ministry has rather muddied the waters more than his boss did yesterday. Those behind the CSE must just eat the humble pie to lay the matter uh, to rest. Their entrenched posture and blame game wouldn't serve them anything uh, good. And if the comprehensive sexual education is not going to be taught in our schools, then what is it doing in the 2019 budget and paid election? Eleven of the teachers' uh, resource uh, pack, and um, uh, also this one from Aben Imbachuna says, "I feel pity for the PR for Education Ministry. The sector minister himself considered personally, yet the PR is trying to defend the defenseless. The defenseless Aben Imbachuna sends that one in. Some of your comments that you've sent in via WhatsApp on zero two four four three four zero four three. Seven. And we'll, we'll shortly bring you the latest in uh, our series on Dear Nanado, uh, which of course focuses on the controversial um, One Village, One Dam uh, project. Um, I want to share, share me, with me your thoughts on the subject of the Ghana Education Service, also the heart wrenching story we had of the, of the woman and her children. Send me a WhatsApp, 0244 340. 437. Now, um, uh, it was a sword that was cut and a uh, mixed pump and pageantry. And the president was there. It's been a year since President Kufado visited the village. It's, it's, a, it's called Botingly in the Sabalugu district of the northern region to cut sword for a dam under the One Village, One Dam um, you know, program. The project was to ensure that the people could farm even during the dry season. Now, they're, they're worried now because nothing has happened since the sword was cut. That ceremony with pomp and pageantry. Well, my colleague, uh, Jojo Kwabana, uh, has this in his latest Dianonado series. Um, at least at uh, during construction stage, about 160,000 plus direct and indirect jobs. And after construction, 32,000 permanent jobs. That was tremendous. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Was it your idea? Yes, sir. It's your idea. 
Very really young man to be in charge of this kind of thing. <laughs> so I'm humbled, sir. It was a well attended, colorful ceremony filled with dancing, drumming, and pump. But as the rhythmic sounds of drums and happy voices died down, the banner announcing the project was pulled off and construction of the dam never took off. The only thing to show after the funfair is the foundation stone bearing the names of Nana Adodankwa Akufrado and the Minister for Special Development Initiative. How Savalugu and Botingli chiefs were very happy and welcomed the president. We were all happy. It was like a market day. But since he left, the project never started. We plead with the president not to disgrace the Savalugu chief. He should please try and fulfill the promise. The project head and CEO of High Limit Group, Emmanuel Labi, explains why the project has not yet started over one year after the sword was cut. The project is a PPP project, a public private partnership, with the government of Ghana as the facilitator and High Limit as the developer. And so we needed, although it's a social intervention project, but the source of financing is a loan. And so we needed to commercialize the project in a way that um, the investment can be recovered. The work on the, the restructuring and also processing aspect of it, we needed to do some, some field work to gather information to do some, some report work, and this is what has delayed us. We are hoping that uh, at least by November ending, we'll be able to move equipment to the site. We hope that by July 2022, we will complete everything. So that's um, the latest in our Citizen Driven series, Dear Nanado. In a bit on the Joy Prime, um, Joy News Prime on the Joy News channel on Multi TV, uh, would have the full piece of um, this edition of Dear Nanado on the news. You don't want to. And you it. also want to uh, join Nancy Mefajadosi on the Joy News Prime uh, for the very latest. Uh, in this uh, day five, day five of the Joy Thing Ghana campaign. campaign that went around today, they went to the markets and found some really horrific things um, when it comes to what we eat. Something shocked you today when when you yeah, heard? Yeah, when I heard that they add some uh, uh, corns or is it uh, some substance to the pepper mm -hmm. for powdered pepper to make it red, mm -hmm. and then also they add lime. Uh, to the condo before they mail it. Uh, for whatever reason, we don't know. They couldn't say why. Well, check our many social media pages and also watch uh, it uh, on the Johnny's Prime uh, in, in at 7 p.m. because you can see all the shocking things about the food that you eat out there. Well, that's it for News Night tonight. Uh, up next is the uh, Joy Sports team with commentary uh, on the game between Barcelona and, and Inter Milan. And, Inter Milan. and um, Lionel Messi is starting for Barcelona. Barcelona have a record.